comes up, I'm just going to move this a little bit. Okay, so we at Fountain Spatial have been, um, uh, we're a consulting firm and we've created this map viewer, this parcel viewer for your county. Um, we've been working on this for the past couple months. Besides creating the uh, parcel viewer, we also um, installed it on your servers and train some of your staff in its maintenance. So the website you're looking at right here is live and it's hosted right here in this, in, in the county. So you notice the URL up at the top. Um, it says essex-gis-co-essex.ny.us. That is live from, from your uh, IT department. So just to show you a little bit here, we have a bunch of, I'm gonna use my mouse here, here's my mouse. So this is the, um, the home tab, the map tab, and it shows you the home page. And just, you can see it just has your county logo, um, tells you a, a couple things you can do with your web map. I'm gonna scroll down here. It has some links to your county's website. If you click on one of those links, it will open in a new tab. So you're still seeing your map right here. Um, it shows our, that we've developed it in in conjunction with, with your county. Also tells you where to go ask questions if you have any questions about this website. And then we have your typical disclaimer down here at the bottom. So that's just on your main home page. So let's just start right here. We're going to, the first thing we do oftentimes is do a parcel search. So I'm just gonna click on that search tab right there. And if you notice, the basic search comes up and you can search on a, an owner name or an address or a parcel ID in conjunction with a municipality. So I'm just going to, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna type Lyme here. So we're going to try to find all the Lyme properties in, oh, let's just go Ticonderoga, and I'm going to do a search. So what, what's happening here is it's finding all the properties owned by Lyme, and you probably are aware that Lyme is a timber company. And so what you find here is once you, once you do a search, the tab will automatically come over here to this data results tab, and you will see down here are the properties that meet your search criteria. So you'll notice here it says we have 19 parcels that are actually owned by Lyme. And you'll notice it was, it didn't have to be an exact search. It's, I only typed in L-Y-M-E and it searched for all the, all the Lyme ADK Timberlands LLC properties. Okay, so if you just scroll down you can see that um, <coughs> There's a bunch here noted. I use my scroll bar to just scroll down to it. And on the left-hand side here, we have some buttons associated with each one of those selected parcels. So I'm just gonna click on this one. This is the zoom. By the way, you notice if I hover over a button, we have a tool tip that comes up to tell you what it is. 
So I'm going to zoom to that particular parcel. <clears throat> so here we've zoomed into parcel 138.4-1-44, and that's, of course, in the town of Ticonderoga. Um, also, over here on the map side, we have this identify tool. So if I click on this one, and then I just come over here and click on this. Oops, sorry. I have to click and not click and drag. It shows you all of the fields that are associated that we, not all the fields that are associated, all the fields that we made available to the map viewer here. So besides the municipality and the owner name, we have some other information down here too, like what the property class code is, what the acres are, what the uh, assessed, both total and the land assessed value is. Um, and some other information. I'll get back to ImageMate online in a minute so you can see that. So besides clicking on the actual parcel, you could click on any parcel and, and do the identify tool to figure out, like in this particular case, who owns the neighboring parcel to that line property. I'm going to shut that down for a minute. So let's come back here. So here, here we have all the parcels, right, that are in your search. So I'm going to come back over here, and you know you searched for Lyme in Ticonderoga. I'm going to do another search here. I'm going to just delete this. Come here, I'm going to search for the property that we're on now. So I'm just going to put court for address. Now I'm going to scroll up here and pick Elizabethtown and do another search. This will show you that you actually have <coughs> 34 parcels in Elizabethtown that are on Court Street. That's the property address, not the owner address. So if we scroll down here, I'm just going to click on one of these. I'm going to zoom to this guy. So that's approximately where we are right now. Other tools that we have here are this zoom in and zoom out tool. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see what we're looking at. I'm going to zoom out again. And so here you kind of can get, you can kind of see where we are here. Right, I'm going to pan down a little bit so that you can see, um, get your bearings here. Um, <clears throat> so, as I said, we have 34 parcels that are on Court Street. I, I clicked on this one right here, this 7551 Court Street. Um, I, I told you I wanted, was going to show you what these other tools were, so this one, I got it is the image made online tool. As you know, you probably know you have a subscription um, <clears throat> to image made online. And uh, you can either, we, image made online has both, as you know, public access and you can pay for a subscription. But we've also made a link to the GIS website and, and SDG's image made online website. So you can go between the two of them. So when you click on the, that particular map, <clears throat> it brings up Image Made Online. And you can notice on the right-hand side in red text, they have put here <clears throat> that there's a new GIS parcel viewer. So that's the link between the two. I'm just going to click here for public access so you can actually see the property that I did click on. Right? So you notice it's in a new tab. I'm just going to click on this tab here. This is the property that we talked about. And that's the image made online information for it. There's another thing that you can do here is, if you scroll down on image made online, if you're an image made online user and this is your main screen where you do all your searches and you're doing comps in image made online, but you actually want to pin the property on the GIS map on the right hand side there. So if I click that button, that is the, the link going the other way around. So again, that brings it up in a new tab. Now you'll notice you have three tabs at the top. The one I was working with is the first one, and the Image Made Online tab, and then it popped you back to a new map viewer. So, and zoomed right to that particular parcel. But I'm going to click back over here, so that's the parcel we were talking about, and that's what coming back from Image Made Online. I'm going to just shut this tab down just so we don't get confused, and I'm going to turn that one off too. So that's the Image Made to Online button. You can get to that both through, through this little house button here for Image Made Online. Another way to get to it, in your Identify, I'm going to click on Identify again, and if we scroll down here, we have a hyperlink right here. That's another way. If I clicked on that, it would bring you to that page again. I'm not going to click again because you've already seen it. 
So what else can we do here? I'm going to shut this down. Um, so we also have this buffer tool. So let's say, for instance, um, you want to notify... Uh oh <laughs> I think we have uh, pop-up issues here. Um, but we can... <laughs> we do the buffer. Yeah, it's not going to do it. Buffer. Okay, then. Here we have a little problem because you need... Some of these have to do with pop-ups and we don't have the pop-ups turned on. So, does anybody know how to turn on the pop-ups? We can probably... I'm not even sure. Usually it comes up and it tells you it's not a pop-up. Oh, that is a bummer. Okay, give me a minute. Inspect. New tab history. I tell you what, we're just going to go on. I'll come back to that if we have time later, but I'm just going to go on. What Buffer does, I'll tell you what it does, and then you can... It will create an actual dashed buffer around that parcel, and then you it's, it's defaulted to be 100 feet from the property line, and it will select all the neighboring parcels. Okay? It really will do it if you have pop-ups turned on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but then a couple things that you can do with, with your selected set over here. Remember, over here we have 34 parcels selected. These are just the ones on Court Street. You can actually do an export here. What export will do is it will export those 34, all the information for those 34 parcels into a CSV file. CSV file, as some of you probably know, is a comma separated values file. So if you notice on your status bar on the bottom, it showed you that you have your data results right here where my mouse is. It downloaded that. Just say okay here. And of course, I'm using a different computer that I normally use. So you have to, oh, here, let's accept this. But what you're seeing there is all those 34 parcels, all the data in, and it brings up Microsoft Excel, I guess, is what shows here. So you can see you have all the, all the information there for 34 parcels. We'll scroll down, right? It says 35 is your row, but that's because we have a, we have a, a header row right there. So then you can do anything you want to that you would normally do in Excel, whatever. Make mailing labels, I don't know, do an average, average on your uh, assessed values or maxers, mins, whatever you need. So I'm going to close this down, come back to our map. Again, that was the export. Um, I want to show you uh, another couple things here. Oh, there you go. versions of all browsers are different, so it's... And nothing's blocked. Allow images. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So he just turned on the pop-ups for me, so now I can show you. Uh, back up here to this buffer. I'm going to scroll down to this property again, and I'm going to hit this buffer. I think I might have to restart the browser. Again, we'll do that in a minute. I hate that when that happens. Okay, so anyways, another thing you can do here is you can actually, you know, we, sh we said we have 34 parcels here. You can clear, you can just clear these 34 parcels so that you don't have any selected. What is going on? See, this is what happens, by the way, when you do a live demo on the site. <laughs> it just happens. Okay. So let's, let's just go on here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to zoom, show you some more of these buttons that you have here. I showed you this one. This is zoom out. This guy is, uh, and if I just hover over it, it will zoom to the initial or full extent of the county, right? This guy is a zoom in. These guys zoom in and out on a just a um, just a canned amount. But over here, if you want to zoom in and out on a particular area, you click that tool and then you actually apply a rectangle and it would zoom in on that particular rectangle. Just like the zoom out, I'm going to zoom out from that particular area. Uh, 
I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but it's getting very common. This Microsoft bird's eye view, if I click on this tool, and then I click on a road, it's going to show you Microsoft bird's eye view, which shows you oblique photography um, for the place that I actually clicked. You got to give it a minute to show. So see, you see the oblique photography? I can zoom in and out of this area. I can change directions here. I can pan around and change directions again. So that is, um, that is just a web service that is not hosted here in this county. That's a Bing web service. It's hosted by Microsoft. So let's shut that down. Another thing you can do is, um, is the Google Street View. You're probably aware of that one. I'm going to click on that Google Street View and just click on a road over here right in front of the building. Um, give that a minute. And again, this is hosted by Google servers, which are all over the world. But this shows you um, the street view. Some of you may have seen the little Google car that runs around and, and takes these pictures. So you know, you can zoom in around, you can move around here, you can walk down the street. You can look at somebody getting into their car. <laughs> you can walk down the street farther. And it's just, we're just walking down Court Street right now. And then you can, of course, look to the right and see the hardware store. But this is not, again, this is not hosted by us. We're just doing a link to this, to this uh, street view here. I could close that. So let's see, we have other things. I want to show you some other things here. I'm going to go to the map button here because on the map button you also have these tabs down here. Okay? I want to show you different map layers that are available to you. So here we have the list of map layers that are currently available in your, in your new site. Um, just to turn a couple of them on here, we can turn on cemeteries, and you notice they come on here, fire stations, town halls. I'm just going to pan over here a little bit. So that's all fine. I turn this stuff on and there's some dots on the screen, but of course you don't know what the dots mean. So you always use this map layers uh, tab along with in conjunction to the map legend. Right? So you can always see that the, like the town hall is in blue and the cemeteries are in green. So we're going to come back here to the map layers. Let's just turn on a more complicated one. This is the Adirondack Park Land Use and Development Plan. Now this is also not hosted here. This is a web service. This is, you know, techie talk here. This is hosted over at the APA. And fine, that's showing you a whole bunch of colors there. But what does that mean? Well, if you go to the map legend and you scroll down, you can see those are what, what the uh, land uses are from hamlet to uh, moderate intensity, rural use, and, and the rest. By the way, the, the screen is washing out some of your colors. You can look on my screen here, and it's much brighter colors, so you'll see it's just the, it's just the projector. And um, So what else do we have here? I'm just going to show you. Besides this, Right, so some ag soils here. You can turn, turn your ag soils on. Again, you won't know what those mean, so you have to come up to the legend to see what the soils mean. Um, and, and there's other ones. I'm just going to turn those off because things get a little, things get a little, uh, turn some of that other stuff off just so you can see. Okay, so another thing you can do here is you notice I went through I went through this map layers and I went through the map legend, but you have a base map here. So the base map uh, shows you all, everything that you can do in the background. This is just a base map, again, not hosted in the county. These are hosted by ESRI, that is the, uh, the, the company that actually we use to do the GIS software. So, but if you can click on imagery, they get imagery from all over. You know how we fly imagery here in New York State every few years, on, depending on what county, what lot you're in. So that will show you the, the uh, imagery. And I'm just going to zoom in so you can see what the imagery looks like downtown. So it, it's really kind of neat when you're in a hamlet or an urban area to look at the imagery. 
But as we know, beautiful Essex County, I'm just going to zoom way out to the county, has an awful lot of forested land. So if we zoom in onto somewhere like, I don't know, right here, what town are we in there? North Alba. So, um, I mean, we know it's beautiful and forested land is great, but you don't really see all that much on the imagery. Come on. There we go. <laughs> So that shows you forested land. So that might not be some base map that you want. If you want to see other information, again, you, this is your, your gallery of base maps that you have available. You might want to see the topography. So that just shows uh, some contour lines and some hill shading to show you where that might be an easier, better thing. Takes a second to refresh, right? It's all depending on your, the speed of your... Um, of your connection to the internet and your Wi-Fi and all those other things. Okay, so that's changing the base map. There's some other tools over here that we actually have not used yet. Um, <clears throat> first, I'm going to show you this uh, draw tool because we have a nice gray background here that I can draw on. You have this draw tool, so I click there. When I click on the draw tool, you'll notice in the left-hand part over here, the tools tab became selected. And here it says, what do you want to draw? A point line or a polygon? I'm just going to choose a polygon just to show you how obnoxious I can be here. I'm going to choose a yellow, solid color with an outline. I'm going to do a big fat border of pink. Right? And then it says over here, <clears throat> just draw it. So here I'm going to just draw a nice little beautiful polygon. Not sure why you'd want to do this, but you could draw anything on the map. You can also draw lines. If you have a project, I'm going to draw just a big, big fat pink lines. All right, so, okay, so here the project area is blah, blah, blah. So you can always do that. You can draw on your map if you need to uh, display anything. I'm going to go back out to here so I can show you the other tools, and I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to come back here to, oh, well, here, let's come back here to our search. We're going to go to, I'm going to search that again so I can, oh, let's come back to Elizabethtown, and I'm going to just zoom to some parts along Court Street. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm also going to come over here, and I'm going to turn back on the imagery, and... I'm just going to pan over a little bit. So now I would like to show you these other these other tools. Here we have these measure tools. Oops, not that one. This one is the measure tool. Right, it has the two rulers there. So for the measure tool, you can either measure you can measure areas. So like for instance, uh, I'm going to click on the area tool and I'm going to change this acreage to square feet. If you had to, I don't know, like redo your, retire your roof and you wanted to know approximate um, materials that you were going to need, you click there. I'm just going to kind of go around the roof and I'm going to get the approximate square feet of the roof. It's 12,000 square feet. Is that roof? Just an approximate kind of thing. You can do any kind of an area here. Another thing you can do is uh, this, this uh, linear. And that's going to show in miles. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. You want to know... Okay. I'm going to do, again, linear. Do in miles. You want to know how far, you know, little Johnny has to walk to school. You can just click down here and down here and, and then double click. And it will show you what I just clicked there. And you can kind of see it in the, in the blue line. Is... Uh, 0.3 miles. Another thing we can do over here is turn that off and put back on topography and you can see it better. Or even a light gray canvas and you'll even be able to see it even better than that. So that's another tool. Um, I am uh, just want to check on my time here. So there's one more thing I want to show you. There's one more tool down here that we haven't looked at. This is um, Feature Select by Geometry. So if you know you know your area, you don't want to do a you don't want to do a location search, and you don't want to do an owner search, and you don't know the property, but you do know you want to select these parcels over here, right? You can just zoom to wherever you want to select, and then you click on this search by geometry, 
and here it's, it prompts you to select a layer. The only layer that we do possible here is, is uh, the parcel layer. And you can draw a rectangle. Again, you can draw a rectangle. As I said, I'm going to click rectangle. You can draw a rectangle. And it will select all the parcels that touch that rectangle. Or if you want to do a, I'm going to come back to here, click it again. You want to do a circle. Now you'll see I'm just going to draw a circle down here. And it should select those parcels down there. Right? You can do a polygon or a freehand polygon. You, would, you know you want these, and you want to come over here and get these. It'll select all those parcels. So again, this is working on your selected set. You can do everything over here that you want to. You can export it into a CSV file, um, or then you clear your selections. So besides the buffer, I think we've shown you everything here. Um, if I refresh, the, I'm sure if I refresh, and, and our uh, pop-ups will come up. But, Honestly, buffer did work. I did it this morning at my house, hitting your live site. So, any? Does anyone have any questions? Are these printable? Uh, you can only. We've turned off the print um, because I know that the real property department um, uh, kind of sells maps. So, but you can always do a screenshot and print that. You can put it in a word document. <laughs> That's an image made online. That is not this particular product we're talking about. Is the map viewer, and this is public. It's only that other link to that other website that I really. <laughs> image made online. You don't have to look at image made online, sir. It's um, you can do comps. You can do lots of things with image made online, but we'll talk to Charlie later. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much. Any other questions? That's it? Uh, Wes? Is this active right now? Yes. It's access to the uh, website? Access to the website? Correct. Okay. Yes. Now, oh, Charlie asked me to mention also that your other GIS, your other website is still up and available in conjunction with this. This is yet another site now that you have. Anything else? Anyone? Okay. Thank you, Liz. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Resolution number one, resolu authorizing a correction of the 2016 Town and County Tax Rule, Town of Crown Point, Richard Knock. Moved by Mr. Harrington, seconded by Mr. Mario. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Accepting and placing on file the 2015 Weights and Measures Annual Report. Moved by Mr. Monty, seconded by Mr. Gill. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Resolution of condolence to the family of Ronald, Ronald M. Purdy. I'll move that. Can I get a unanimous second? Aye. Aye. Authorizing the issuance of a permit to Lake Placid Marathon Inspiration Sports LLC for the use of the county railways for the 2016 Lake Placid Marathon and Half Marathon. I'll also move that. Second. Second. Mr. Whitson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Resolution of appreciation and congratulations to Ethel Rice of Mineville, New York upon her 100th birthday. Moved by Mr. Skaz and Father. Can I have a unanimous second? Second. second. Thank you. So number six, um, we initially had put the resolution, all the 
reclassifications of um, the towns or the roads, I'm sorry, in one. And if you go to the letter, I made a copy of um, the letter from Jim Dugan on your desk. So I'm going to read these separately. They're going to be moved separately. So the first one is number eight in the letter that you have on your desks. It's a uh, resolution requesting the New York State Department of Transportation reclassify Essex County Route 12, Wells Hill Road. Moved by. Mr. Monty, seconded by. Mr. Morrow. Discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Resolution requesting the New York State Department of Transportation reclassify Essex County Route 57, Reber Road. Moved by Mr. Gilliland, seconded by Mr. Morrow. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Resolution requesting the New York State Department of Transportation reclassify Essex County Route 80, the Lakeshore Road. Moved by Mr. Tyler, seconded by Mr. Marnell. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Resolution requesting the New York State Department of Transportation reclassify Essex County Route 44, Stevenson Road. Moved by Mr. Tyler. Seconded by Mr. Monty. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Resolution requesting the New York State Department of Transportation reclassify Essex County Route 25, Tahaz Road. Moved by Mr. Mega. Seconded by Mr. Marahill. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, um, the next one, authorizing a contract amendment with Schroeder River Associates for engineering services, including final design, bidding, and construction phase services as it relates to the Halls Falls Road construction project in the town of Keene, in an amount not to exceed 42500 from budgeted funds, and authorizing the county chairman and or county manager to execute the same. Moved by Mr. Morrow. Seconded by... Mr. McNally, any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. Authorizing a contract amendment with Dente Engineering for engineering services, including geotechnical engineering reports and performing subsurface investigations as it relates to the Hazleton Road or bridge over New Bridge Brook in the town of Wilmington, in an amount not to exceed $9,675 from budgeted funds, and authorizing the county chairman or county manager to execute the same. Moved by Mr. Morrow, seconded by Mr. Tyler. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Authorizing a contract amendment with Dente Engineering for engineering services, including performing subsurface investigations and providing geotechnical engineering reports as it relates to Fraternal Land Road Bridge over Paradox Creek in the town of Scroon, in an amount not to exceed $9,300 from budgeted funds and authorizing the county chairman or county manager to execute the same. Moved by Mr. Marnell, seconded by Mr. Moore. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Authorizing a contract amendment with Dente Engineering for engineering services, including performing subsurface investigations and providing geotechnical engineering reports as it relates to the Troutbrook Road Bridge over Troutbrook in the town of Minerva, and the amount not to exceed $9,123 from budgeted funds, and authorizing the county chairman or county manager to execute the same. Moved by Mr. McNally, seconded by Mr. Mega. Any discussion? Tom? Uh, yeah. I I notice these are all amendments to the original contract. How do these come up now? We're going to do this. How do we? Again, Tom, this goes back to the original um, discussion we had at budget time that we were going to get engineering done ahead of time rather than after because we were getting um, estimates that were way out of line of what we anticipated them to be. This is part of that 275 we set aside for engineering budget. Um, this particular one is for um, geoengineering. The first one was for bridge design with Shorter River last month. This is an extension to that for the subsurface investigation. Again, it's it's an attempt to get these bridges that we know we're going to end up having to replace so that we have the accurate information to arrive at an estimate for bond that we'll really need. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. 
authorizing a contract amendment with Dente Engineering for engineering services, including performing subsurface investigations and providing geotechnical engineering reports as it relates to the Trout Brook Road Bridge over Minerva Brook in the town of Minerva and an amount not to exceed $9,123 from budgeted funds and authorizing the county chairman or county manager to execute the same. Moved by Mr. McNally, seconded by Mr. Mega. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Authorizing the chairman or county manager to file an application for state assistance from the Household Hazardous Waste State Assistance Program and executing the associ associated state contract under the laws of New York State. Moved by Mr. Morrow. Seconded by Mr. Mega. Discussion? Mr. Monty. This is a, this is a program that we run once a year to collect hazardous waste from throughout the county. The DEC provides 50% funding. We budget the rest. Um, we hold those um, collection sites at either Lake Placid and North Hudson. Um, and it generally occurs sometime between May and Ju July of each year. Thank you. That's what we've got. Mr. McNally. A little bit off subject, but uh, is there any way that we can incorporate e waste in, into this hazardous waste thing program? I think everybody, I think everybody on this board has got a separate contract with different people. And yeah, didn't I just read something about that? Like within the last the yeah, last week, yeah, two days. You did. There is a discussion at the state level of how to do it. E waste. It's, it's still. They passed a few years ago the law requiring manufacturers to take back the equipment. Um, there are places that do it. We have a place in Lake Placid. Most of you do end up finding a place to do it. Um, but apparently, it's not really working all that efficiently. And the state has um, moved within this budget to dis to have a discussion about changing how that e-waste is handled. In 2010, they made this e-waste, and, and according to the DEC website, that every county is supposed to have a free drop-off, yeah, which is funded policy. by the manufacturers for e-waste. Yeah. And uh, in the last two years, I've been through three different vendors to get rid of e-waste, and the prices have varied from starting at free to 37 cents a pound. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe every county is supposed to have a free e-waste drop site, according to the DEC. Yeah, never happened. And everybody, Tommy? Yeah, we're doing e-waste in Mariah, and it's um, because our constituents requested it. We did over 11,000 pounds. It's costing us a fortune because of the CRTs that you they used to take them for nothing. Now you've got to pay to get rid of them, so we have to charge. Um, just had to file our annual report, which is a nightmare. Um, just trying to file that thing. I had a long conversation with DEC. They they refer me to the uh, to the company that developed their software. I mean, this entire program has turned into a um, a real financial liability for the townships that are trying to provide this service to their constituents because now there's no market for this stuff and uh, and some of the old uh, televisions and computer screens and so on have mercury in the glass so that makes it a, it's, it's just uh, you try to do the right thing and this is what happens and um, and it's it's a real problem yeah it's all falling apart it is yeah I guess we can wait and see if the where the state is going with that because they're well aware that it doesn't work the system does not work in this instance so but it is a problem because you're not supposed to be throwing them in like exactly you can't put them in the waste stream so, so i think i know we've been through three yeah. different and now it's charging so anything else on that topic mr monty my understanding of that article and i may have had it wrong was that the manufacturers we're supposed to accept these back free of charge, mm, but now correct. the manufacturers are charging for them, so that's where the problems were. Really, yeah, it was arising. So, so now it's you know they're turning it over to the municipalities to handle it. Yeah, it, it is it is an ongoing issue. I know we did find a place in Plattsburgh that does take it without charge. Um, we bring our county stuff to them. Well, and the only thing is they re request that we notify them ahead of time that they're bringing it. But I think the problem occurred, especially in the rural counties, is that there aren't enough businesses that actually, um, you know, you don't have a, 
a Walmart or something like that. But you know, um, that's again, it was supposed to it was supposed to fall to the manufacturers, and it really has not done so. I mean, currently, right now, we're we're taking ours to Plattsburgh also. But yeah. it's, I know it's going to be a short-lived program up there when they get inundated by everybody on the boards taking their stuff up there free, and exactly. then we'll be back to the drawing board. Yeah. You're right. And, and according to the, you know, every county is supposed to have one of these. According to the DEC in this 2010 law, they came out with this e-waste e recycling law. Mm -hmm. And they're supposed to be sponsored by the manufacturers. So I don't know why we don't have one. It's a good question. It's a good question. Very good. One. Judy, did we have any other uh, resolutions? I do not have any other. Is, I just want to touch on one thing. On these resolutions on the engineering, I just want you to, one of the things that the discussion I had with both Chris and Jim during the budget time was, okay, if we do these resolutions, I mean, if we do these studies ahead, are they going to age themselves out? And they are not. I mean, the, what we're doing is the design and, and like the subsurface stuff. It's just not going to change whether we do the bridge this year or do it five years from now. The subsurface report will be what it is, and we can use it over time. So that's really why we committed to doing these ahead. Does anyone else have anything? Mr. Skazafa. I have two resolutions I'd like to move from the floor. Do I need 11 on that or no? No. 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 Okay. No. First resolution is congratulations to the Mariah Central School Girls Varsity Basketball Team, who are the Class D Section 7 championships and champions and they played a um, it was a great game against um, against Keene Central School and went off from our congratulations to them. Moved by Mr. Skazapava. I'm gonna get on a second please. Okay. Thank you. Second is congratulations to our boys varsity class D basketball team which are section seven champions and they also played a um, a good game against Willsboro Central School on Saturday. Moved by Mr. Skazapava. Can we get in on a second, please? Thank you. Sean, did you have anything you wanted to report at this time about Washington other than they have bad weather every year and you guys get stranded? Uh, Nagel Conference was interesting. I attended uh, the most interesting one. Can you talk into your microphone, please, Sean? The most interesting one was the Affordable Care Act um, symposium I went to. Uh, and, uh, you know, as you know, the uh, Cadillac tax is, is, was supposed to 2020, but uh, based on the growth of all the insurance uh, uh, policy, policies, you know, it, it, around the country, particularly government-sponsored insurance policies, um, by 2017, all the federal employees are going to be subject to the Cadillac tax, and so now we think we're going to be able to kill it because the federal government doesn't want to pay a 40% excise tax on itself. So um, that was kind of good news. Um, we went and saw Senator Schumer's office. Uh, or I saw Senator, Senator Schumer. I saw uh, uh, John Cardinal, who's chief of staff for, I believe, chief of staff for uh, Gillibrand, and um, you know, Bill went to to see uh, Congresswoman uh, Stefanik. Um, they're in the process of trying to, or, or Senator Schumer is trying to get earmarks back um, so that when we do go and knock on their door and stuff like that, that you know, they could possibly get uh, <clears throat> money put back in. I guess that, that that's a rule change, not a law change. So under the new leadership that's uh, probably going to be coming in after the next election, we may, may have a possibility of getting earmarks, earmarks back, which give us better better uh, ability to reach out for what at the federal level, you know, small crumbs. Um, nothing really except that uh, they, you know, that the, they reiterated the fact that we go every year like this and keep knocking on the door, keeps them there, you know, keeps them attuned, um, and they um, they did mention to me like the Wills, Senator Schumer mentioned the Willsboro Dam. Evidently, he, he made a phone call after our meeting last year and got a push, and I, all of a sudden Fish and Wildlife came up with the money, out, you know, miraculously, and we were able to take the dam out. So the, the, the system kind of works when we go and do that. All of them reiterated the fact that they're very, very sensitive to economic issues, particularly up here in the North Country, New York, and they would rather have it be, you know, they'd rather play offensive football instead of defensive, so, and, you know, they don't want to wait till there's a major layoff or, you know, or a company leaving or something like that. They, 
they said it doesn't matter how small, um, if they can help, they will. But, you know, so the message was if you get any inkling that there's going to be something, you know, that, that is going to be affected, um, they'd rather get on the phone and call, you know, whatever the corporation or company and stuff like that to try to stop it or, or to ameliorate the, uh, the move. Um, and they brought up the, uh, the Messina issue, you know, that, that was an emergency and they had to jump in. They could have been, you know, if they had two weeks head up, heads up, they could have stopped it without much problem. Um, so that was the message they carried to us. Um, any questions? Sorry, Sean, that I kind of put you on the spot. It clicked when I was sitting here looking at you. But I want to point out the importance of making those connections. Um, some people will make comments about traveling and whatnot. Um, I have been told this morning um, that we were in Albany for the Association of Counties, and we were able to be fortunate enough to talk to the right people about what's been happening with some of these grants. And I was told this morning that several people have been paid and notified they're going to be paid, and that was from talking to one person in Albany. I've also had, uh, if everyone that I know reads the paper, um, both The Sun and The Press Republican had editorials about the EMS crisis. I have had three phone calls from the governor's office in regards to this, but uh, we're not there yet. But I am scanning this afternoon and emailing those articles to the contact at the governor's office that I'm dealing with. So I, I'm hopeful that at some point someone's going to listen. Um, I know our own fire district in Wilmington, they discussed at the meeting last uh, last Monday night to uh, raise the district budget. It is currently 193 to raise it $300,000 more to go around the clock coverage with EMS. So I don't know why this hasn't gotten people's attention, but um, we're, we are trying. And I, I wanted to point out, thank Sean and Bill for going to Washington, but, but meeting those people and getting in their face and getting to know you is extremely important. So anyone else have anything to come before the board? Mr. Monty. I have a couple of resolutions from the floor. Sure. Uh, resolution number one is a condolence to the family of Ryan Finney Sr., a uh, lifetime Lewis resident and county DPW employee who died uh, suddenly recently. Motion by Mr. Monty, unanimous second, please. Second, second, second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the second one is a resolution of condolence to the family of Catherine Sweat. Uh, she was also a lifelong resident of Lewis. She was a town historian for 50 years. Uh, her husband served on the Lewis Town Board for several years and was also town justice. Uh, her son, Robert, presently serves on our board. Moved by Mr. Monty, and I'm a second, please. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Dan? Just for information, I'm sure you've been getting, you probably have, maybe have gotten the 1095, I mean the 1095B forms and the 1095C forms. Those are both to do with Obamacare. Um, they're, they're essentially, if you're an employer, um, the insurance companies have to send the 1095B form. And that form essentially just says that you had coverage during the calendar, previous calendar year, and it talks about what dependents on the 1095B, it talks about what dependents were on your plan. It doesn't have to this year be filed with your income tax. I suspect down the road it will be. It's a way of the federal government um, accounting for how people um, whether they are or aren't actually getting insurance coverage. When they ask that question on your income tax, did you have insurance company during the following year, this is part of that proof that you will eventually will need um, as we go forward. The 1095 Cs are any employer over 50, which includes us, has to send a notification out to every subscriber that says we provided the coverage and here was the cost and this is um, what your share of the cost was. So those are the two forms you may see coming. Um, as members of the board, you may get them from us. And for any employer under 50, the insurance company will automatically send those out um, as well. So if your employees start getting these, they're really this year's just a notification um, purpose to save and keep with their income tax. Um, but eventually, I think down the road, they'll be required um, as proof of coverage um, for the income tax purposes. 